them chips. Hello, everybody out there in Radio Land. Oh uh, yeah, Podcast Land. Uh, it's it's Paul and, and Bryce and, uh, again. You may not recognize us because we yeah. probably sound different. That's true because you probably are thinking to yourself, "Those guys sound incredibly <laughs> confident." <laughs> <laughs> and and you're right, we and, are. And then you're probably thinking, wait, Paul and Bryce are only normal confident. They're confident, but they're just normal confident. <laughs> These guys are off the charts. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably because today we're talking about confidence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is Relapse Some Chips, episode 16. Is it? Yep. Nice wow. round. I mean, sorry, number. that wasn't very confident. It, it is, is definitely 16. It's definitely 16. <laughs> There's nothing better than a podcast episode that is divisible by four. <laughs> I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just made that up. He said with confidence. Um, but it's also a perfect square or whatever. Is that what you call it? I don't know. I don't know. Four squared is 16. I can't remember what you call I don't it. Know. Anyways. Um, so you probably are wondering, last time I, I mentioned we were going to talk about the other Cold War. Oh. About male and female dynamics. But surprise, right. we're not talking about that right now. Because we actually, kind of on a whim... Because we felt a surge of confidence tonight, uh, thought we'd we'd uh, record a, a late night podcast. So that's what we're doing. That's true. Also, we were talking about confidence. Uh, uh, we were kind of kicking around ideas. It's, about it's confidence been on our minds. Too, so, it's been on our minds. Um, but the Cold War is coming, and it is coming. Don't you worry, because the Cold War it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Sadly, it's not. And, um, so we'll have plenty to talk about about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyways. So, yeah, man. Com- confidence. confidence. How, how do you feel about it, Bryce? What? So good about it. Yeah, yeah. Do you, it's um, the best. <clears throat> I mean, you got some preliminary thoughts, but we were some of the stuff we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I mean, generally, it seems like um, part of what we were talking about uh, is um, I don't know, and I think this goes for both genders in uh, in uh, you know. Quasi romantic interaction. Yeah, we're definitely talking about like <clears throat> in singles, uh, like dating context, yeah. uh, but or in just a general like social context. I think. Yeah. Right. Like in in social situations, like uh, you know, confidence matters so much. The reality is, you know, oftentimes we don't feel confident. Um, yeah. Kind of part of what got me thinking about this this past week is that we were at the social event uh, where I didn't feel confident. I, I felt. Uh, I mean. <laughs> Wait, I think oh, I was at that. You Wasn't were. I? That's what I was saying. We. That's right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember now. So I was feeling, I, I was a little bit, I know, I, I feel like this is my refrain every time, but uh, I didn't, I needed more sleep. I was sleep deprived. And so anyway, so I was feeling kind of anxious, like socially. Yeah. And, and this was, it was an event where the speaker was talking about like, uh, like dating and what can be done better, um, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and right. Afterwards, like, I was just, uh, I just was not feeling it. I did not have my mojo, and yeah. I felt really bad about it because, like, there was a specific incident that really bothered me uh, that, that uh, you know, after the speaker was done, we were eating, like, popsicles and just mingling with other single people there. And, um, you know, this is, like, especially for, well, for for proactive single people, right, that's like the prime opportunity to meet new people, right, and potentially mm-hmm. find someone, you know, that you want to get to know better or some ones. Um, right. So it's kind of prime time. Yeah, we were going to say. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, and when Bryce has his full confidence, he struts up. All, <laughs> he struts up all slow-mo <laughs> yeah. with his shoulders, like, really uh-huh. moving back and forth a uh-huh. lot. And in a deep voice, he, he says something very confident, but... but yeah. You know, that doesn't always happen. But this time it was the opposite. Yeah. I was like, yeah, anyway. Which, um, interesting. Tonight I was feeling like that a little bit at one well, event we I, went to I, as well. I just want to um, give the scenario. Because okay. you remember, I was I lamenting. Do. I do. Like this, this, this cute girl, uh, as I went over to the to where the popsicles <laughs> were on the popsicle table, I grabbed one and she's like, she smiled at me and she said, hi. And I said, and I smiled and said, hi. And then I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, uh, what I wanted to do was strike up a conversation, but I just was not feeling it. I didn't have the confidence. Sure. Or it's too bad. I mean, because the perfect thing to say would have been like, "Hi," and 
Hang on, like five minutes, because when I finish eating this, I know there's a joke at the bottom of this popsicle. <laughs> yeah, and that's what like... I would have needed, actually. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I even like had a few other opportunities later to like say like, "Hey, what was your name?" Or <laughs> I started by the popsicle table, but like, and but I was like racking my brain for like some sort of joke or some sort of like <laughs> conversation starter, and for whatever reason, it just was not coming. But honestly, I mean, one, I was feeling kind of like just kind of crummy you know physiologically because i hadn't sure. gotten enough sleep um but you know that also led to like psychologically a lack of confidence which kind of um you know killed any any hopes of a of a suave and uh charming social interaction yeah um I know. it's unfortunate it's always hard to come up with a good yeah. Icebreaker, yeah. even if it's a second icebreaker. Yeah, and and honestly, I worried about it too much, right? Because again, the issue was that I wasn't feeling confident on the inside, and then yeah. I lamented to to my friends on the drive home uh, about how much I regretted it. Anyway, that that was my scenario that got me thinking about this this week. And you played it over and over again in his mind, and <laughs> and he just kept saying, "If only I would have gone up to him and said, hey, remember when we said hi a while ago?'" <laughs> well, or, you like popsicles, I, huh? I was hoping we could. <laughs> I was hoping we could pick up where we left off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Bryce. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely like this mental and emotional thing. Sure. Um, I was talking to Bryce earlier today, too, about how, like, um, you know, it's, okay, I don't have a citation for this, but I'd heard, I've heard about this from about a uh, study where they had some men wear cologne and other men not wear cologne. And then they just said, we're going to have you talk to some girls in a group and uh, we're just going to take pictures from afar and just talk to them. That's all. And then they, they, they snapped the photos of these guys and then they went later and they showed photos to the girls, to other girls. And they just said, which of these men do you think is more confident? And the, the women tended to pick the men who had been wearing cologne, although yeah. there's no reflection of that. I mean, you can't smell Visually, the cologne in the yeah. photos, but, but somehow they visually appeared more confident. And, yeah. And um, I was kind of commenting about how, <clears throat> you know, any small amount of uh, positive reinforcement breeds confidence. Like it, yeah. it feeds you confidence. And yeah. as a guy, you don't need you don't need a lot of that to feel confident. And 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 almost any guy, and maybe this goes for females as well. Of course, I can't speak authoritatively on that. But yeah. but I know for myself. Any small amount of positive reinforcement, like when I'm talking to a girl that I feel some interest in, or I think I might have some interest in, and she's mm-hmm. giving me some positive feedback. Uh huh. I don't need barely any of that, and That's it's right. like <laughs> confidence. Just a little small drop, and you're like confidence. Maybe more confident than you. It's like are justified being right. It's like <laughs> it's like uh, I hate to make a video game reference, but it's like full HP. It's like confident, you know, full HP. I don't full know. Full HP, like full, oh, full HP. Oh, <laughs> full hit points. You know, it's like when you just yeah, ate a mushroom and then you grew exactly, and you can shoot fireballs exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, women. That that reference is only for the guys. Some women <laughs> just, might get it. Some women might. But uh, yeah, no, it's totally like a total like booster, like yeah, you know, yeah. You can, I I know, for example, for me when I've like gone on dates, and then um, I get a text like sometimes even later. Right after the date, you know, or the next day, like, thanks mm-hmm. for the date. Like, it's the same kind of deal. It's like, ah, okay. It's positive feedback, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, but but I guess in, in the absence of that, like, if you start an interaction with somebody and you don't get that positive feedback, sometimes it's the opposite effect. You know, you can feel, of course, sometimes that's because a person's not interested in you. Or maybe yeah. Really well, yeah. But yeah. it can deflate your confidence yeah. a little bit. Um, um, I was just thinking... I, th- I think what what makes the social world work is that kind of reciprocity, right? Yeah. That in in a social situation, people know to behave in ways that like are pleasant and welcoming, right? Yeah. Because um, I think like in some cultures, maybe that are like more cold or where the the walls to to get in to you know to get to know someone or for them to like in some cultures like. You're not supposed to smile <laughs> at strangers, right? Yeah. And I mean, that's true to some extent everywhere. But like, uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, is it a confidence killer there? I don't know. Maybe if it's a, okay, 
Sure, like maybe most of the stuff of what we're talking yeah. about here applies mostly yeah. to like U.S. Cause, culture. Yeah, because I mean, because the reality is right. Like we don't always feel confident, and this is true of men, women, extroverts, introverts. Um, yeah. You know, um, in Russia when they were preparing for the uh, the uh, World Cup, mm-hmm. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, but I know we've talked about it offline. That um, they had this big campaign to like teach people how to smile to uh-huh. strangers because. It's a culture in which they don't smile at strangers. And so they had like, yeah. they were trying to teach everybody, okay, when all these people come for the World <laughs> Cup, they're going to expect you to smile at them even though you don't know them. And, you know, if you don't, they're going to they're gonna think like you don't like them. So, and they had this like slogan that said something like, eight teeth is how much you need to show. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how you say that in Russian, but it was something like that, which I think is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So, okay. so I don't know. Anyway, I feel like, um, you know, sometimes, and, I think single people probably feel this a lot uh, th- that you don't feel like putting yourself out there socially. You know, you're, you yeah. get home from work, you're like, uh, you know, or like maybe you got invited to some uh, some party or something, and you may not feel it. Um, and to some extent, it's kind of, or maybe you're just feeling like, uh, I'm not feeling like my charming, hilarious, you know, witty self, or you know, kind and and pleasant self. Um, I feel like it's a mind game. Like if you can go and do anyway, and you get some some of that positive reinforcement, that can really help you help change shift your mindset. Um, I feel like that happened tonight actually with with because we had, we had a good night. That's part of why why we felt uh like uh, like doing this tonight is that we or I don't know I I had a good night. Yeah, I did too. So, yeah, like I mean, it got better as the night wore on. Yeah, yeah, because um. um <clears throat> um, like we went to this this music night and talked to some cute girls and hung out with friends and got to hoot and holler at at uh, the performers in a, in a tasteful way in a yeah in a some great <laughs> supportive karaoke. way yeah and then we did some karaoke yeah with another friend's place and um anyway it's what we do can definitely affect our mindset um yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, I mean, not always. I mean, sometimes, like, it's sometimes, true. I mean, there's yeah, things we yeah. can do off, outside of the activity too. In general, sure. that when we're, I mean, we've talked some in general uh, about, you know, doing things that we know are gonna be good for us socially. You know, and and some of those things just make you feel more confident. Uh-huh. Like when like things what? are going well in your life, like, uh-huh. you know, when your career stuff is going well, when yeah. you're physically doing well. Yeah. Yeah, like you make it a good point about sleep. Like, um, you know, if you're like tired or worn out or whatever, you're not gonna be feeling as good. Yeah. About yourself. Yeah. I'm tired and worn out a lot of the time nowadays. Yeah, you are. Because I work a lot. But, yeah, you um, are. So. And I'm like, Paul, you need more confidence. And then you're like, No, man, I need more sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Okay, let me get some, and then I fall asleep. Um, and recharge. Give me yeah. about eight hours, and I'll be yeah. right back. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm like the weirdest sleeper in all the world. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you are. But we'll talk about a, it another yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <we> <laughs> if ever. Um, one of the other comments too that I was making. Uh, so I think confidence is attractive. Absolutely, in, in both men and women. Absolutely, uh, it definitely is. Um, yeah. Although one of the things I was one of the things I had mentioned to Bryce Taylor is that. Now I was in this like group discussion one time where it was like a, it was like a, it was like a just an open discussion, uh, guys and girls, and they were asking like, what do you think about girls asking guys out, and um, a bunch of people gave a bunch of answers and stuff, and I had a I had a thought that I didn't I didn't share uh, because the discussion was like taking too long, but <laughs> and I didn't want to like drag on, but. But I was talking to a girl later about it, and one of the points that I made was that um, oftentimes girls will say when they ask guys out, it doesn't work out, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you could say as a guy, well, a lot of times when you ask a girl out, it doesn't work out too. Of course. Maybe it's just like this. I don't know if it's different statistics, but but oftentimes I think that by the time a girl is at the point where she's going to ask a guy out, she's already given him enough confidence boosters to where if he's interested and – 
and isn't otherwise enough cues, occupied bread or breadcrumbs, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, enough breadcrumbs. There's a popcorn trail there. <laughs> um, there's usually enough that like the guys, um, if you he's he already has his confidence has already been boosted enough to where he is confident enough to ask her out. Yeah. Probably, but that's not always the case. There are some rare exceptions where. Yeah. The guy's just dumb and doesn't notice it, but I think yeah, or, or, oftentimes guys Or maybe dumb. he has noticed, but he doesn't have the confidence to pursue it. That, yeah, that's possible. It is possible. Um, and asking and asking the guy out will definitely boost his confidence, like, up to 100%. Um, but, you know, um, and, and I do think that, like, you know, there's some benefit to that, too, anyways, for, like, a female that wants to do that well, at least, if nothing else, you, you find out whether the guy's yeah. interested or not because that's yeah. what you're wondering about, right? Yeah. What you think he is or there might be something. Yeah. Anyways, that's yeah. tangentially related to confidence. Uh, um, so, uh, do you have something else? No. Nah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think confidence is one of those – I find it to be a very interesting topic because it's not something I was born with. I don't think most people are born with it, although some personalities, I think – and, you know, or birth order or whatever. I definitely think some people can acquire mm. it more easily, and some people acquire it way too easily, more mm. than, and end up being more confident than they ought to be. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, um, more than their situation should merit. Yeah, yeah. And those are narcissists, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, like, are you talking about, do you think like oldest children are more confident or? Probably. Confident? Yeah. Probably. Huh. Um, although in some ways they're also more messed up. Yeah. I don't know. I, I need to look at the, the literature on that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but I would think probably. Um, well, you sure, you, there's a lot of things that can affect this, though. I mean, yeah, I think so. What you're at. I think so. Uh, what, one of my previous roommates, who uh, great great guy, but uh, I would say he, he kind of lacks a lot of confidence. And I was trying to like kind of goad him onto like, hey, like. You know, you got to break through this, you know, and yeah. uh, coaching is one of my side things that anyway, I, I have some, some coaching tendencies. So it's sometimes I want to push people a little bit. Now I got to be careful not yeah. to like do that without their willingness. Anyway, all that to say that like he's a little exasperated and says, well, you know, Bryce, that you were just m- born more confident or you just, you were born with your confidence. And I told him that is not true. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something I've, I've had to develop. Uh, and I think that's the case for all of us. Like, it's, it's a lot like a muscle. You know, it can grow or it can atrophy. Um, um, you know, I, I think confidence stems from a lot of things. In part, it's about your own internal, um, congruity. You know, that yeah. you're living a life of, of integrity, not, not a double life. Uh, I think, um, you know, living in harmony with your values, I think living in such a way that you don't have the cognitive dissonance of your behavior, not matching, matching your beliefs. Um, I think all those things bring, bring confidence. Um, but, but then I think there's also like the more like external world social confidence. And that has so much to do, I think, with culture and with, you know, what is acceptable and, and rewarded in, in when you're interacting with people. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's kind of hard to have confidence if you don't have that internal as well as that external yeah. uh, confidence. But, um, you know, I think for, I mean, you know, all, all people are merely people, so we're all going to struggle with different things. Um, I think it's possible to be, to have that kind of internal confidence, but maybe to lack it socially. Um, or maybe vice versa, to be socially confident, but but in your heart of hearts, when you're all alone, you know, you... Uh, you're like, you, I'm a loser. Yeah, exactly. And and um, I think that's where you get, like, you know, socially affable, you know, private alcoholics, right? <laughs> that they made lots of TV shows about. Um, yeah, sure. Um, some of this, uh, um, you know tracks a little bit with like the personality stuff we were talking about on mm-hmm. the podcast too because like when you yeah. talk about your internal and, and your your internal uh, ideals and your matching your actual behavior like yeah. supposedly especially for like NFs on the mm. Myers-Briggs uh, idealists they tend to be a lot it's more especially idealistic. more important yeah. about for them to because they have they hold themselves to high ideals and yeah. when they fall short of them they are especially hard on themselves yeah whereas other personality types not as much supposedly right. on right. average you know but Right. Um, yeah. 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 I like a lot of that stuff. True. Um, 
conference. And I mean, you know, of course, you could. There's a lot of mental health stuff that could come in here too, and mental sure. and emotional health. And you know, I mean, if someone struggles with depression or whatnot, or or uh, anxiety or bipolar or any uh, obsessive compulsive, any of a number of yeah. things, I'm sure are going to affect confidence in some ways. You know. Yeah, a- absolutely. And you know, you and I were talking about this earlier today. Like, you know, like candidly, like I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast, but I've struggled a lot with depression in my life. Um, you know, a- as well as you know, it's close cousin anxiety. Um, and, and I think you have a little bit too. I think you said. Yeah, yeah, I've never like um I've never sought out any like yeah. well, no, that's not true. Um had a I I have what I would sometimes call situational depression. Mm-hmm. It depends on what it is, but like um yeah, I had a failed relationship and yeah. I was I was I had described it as being bummed out for like a, a really long time. Yeah. Uh and having a hard time getting out of kind of a rut. Now, um it was like when my situation would change, I would instantly be over it though. Mm. But, but while I was in it, it was, it, it was, it was in some ways debilitating, you know, I, yeah. mean, I had a hard time focusing yeah. Yeah. on my then boring job, which I already <laughs> had a hard time focusing on. It made it harder to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I never felt like it was debilitating enough to where, yeah. um, I got any like medical help necessarily yeah. or anything, but well, still. well, I have, and, and I will to to your earlier point. Like, it is absolutely the case that there's like serious, you know, mental illness where it's like no amount of like <laughs> doing the right things in social situations, right, or the, the, or you know, living a you know, and a life of integrity, like that's not going to fix what's going on chemically in your brain. But it's still good, right? Like, if you're, you know, if you behave according to, you know, cultural customs of of polite behavior, that's still a good thing. But but it may not fill you with the good feelings, you know. Or back to our point today, you know, our confidence the way you want. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a special special situation. Um, yeah, but it's something to be aware of at least. Um yeah. that you know, yeah. sometimes there can be things going on besides just Right. Yeah. And you now, know. now that being said, I know I know for me, like psychologically and this, we're kinda straying off of where I thought we'd go with this, but for me psychologically in like growing past my own depression and it's it's always gonna be kind of like in the background looming, but um but no, I, I've I, I know this is true because it's it's something I've done in my own life, but uh, you know I've learned to kind of tackle some of the assumptions and the habits um, that have kind of um, promoted depression. Yeah. Um, and 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 a lot of that for me, and this is I think this. Well, for me, a lot of my depression stemmed from feeling inadequate and and incapable of of. Uh, Doing what I was responsible to do. Um, that, that's as much as I'll get into it now. But, um, you know, there, there's definitely a confidence component to that. Um, so again, back to the idea that it, it's a muscle that can be grown. Um, that is definitely true. Um, you know, again, ignoring the, the real physiological, uh, issue of depression where your neurotransmitters are just really not, um, you know, in the right balance or they're not being, um, not in high enough concentration to pass from, you know, neuron to neuron or whatever. I don't, can't remember the exact. Sure. Um, okay. So barring that, yes, there's things any person can do to become more confident. Um, let, you let, know. Me ask, let me ask you a uh-huh. couple of questions. Um, okay. What do you think about uh, a couple of things? Mm-hmm. Affirmations and uh, things like, I'm trying to remember who it was to give this TED Talk where she talks about like your power stance or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, um, the idea with that is that you're, Wonder Woman, Superman. That your your physical body affects your mindset, and I think that's true. I haven't done. I mean, I mean, I mean that sounds right to me. But the whole power stance thing sounds kind of kooky to me. But at the same time, I don't know that it's that it's bogus. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, back to confidence. I know I just feel after going to do a workout, uh, I feel way better, way more competent, way happier. Um, yeah, like my, and typically, 
<laughs> you know, um, there comes a decision point before going to the gym where it's like, oh, I was going to go to the gym tonight, uh, but I don't feel like it, so I won't. Um, or I, I was going to go to the gym tonight, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to. That that crucial decision point can make a big difference, you know. Um, yeah, and exercise in general. Exactly. I mean, it has so many positive yeah. effects, physical, mental, emotional. Um, it's it's really like a wonder drug in some ways. I yeah, mean, um, yeah. So, um, and, and just, it's also true in general, being in like generally good shape, you know I mean? Sure. I'm sure that's better yeah. for mental and emotional health yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. I, I do think that a lot of social confidence has to do with um, developing your social skills, you know, and a, and a lot of that is emotional intelligence, um, you know, being able to carry on a meaningful interaction with people. Um you know, and I think at a, at a more granular level, it, it also has to do with, um, you know, knowing how to engage people, you know, with humor, um, you know, with with questions and, and commentary that, like, make them feel that you're actually making a connection. Where are you smiling here? <laughs> I, just, uh, I, just, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm just thinking of you talking to the girl with the popsicle. And- <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then totally tonight happened. with that other girl, dude, I was on it. Well, I yeah, mean, I was, I was yeah, pretty on. I was, I was, I was I just, pretty good. I just want you to next time say a line like, so grape, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was going, t- talking about exercise a little bit too. Actually, there was a study recently where they found, they were, t- they were trying to find out how to combat the effects of, uh, of memory loss in hmm. in um, in aging people and and I think they might have been trying to study Alzheimer's as well. But anyways, they found that walking improves your memory. Hmm. And they and they said the reason for this is because when you walk, um, it's the it's your bones that actually put out some kind of I don't remember what it was they produce or they produce something that helps you with your memory. Hmm. And uh, the more you walk, the more your bones produce it. And so hmm. so you know if you exercise. Maybe you'll remember that girl's name. <laughs> I already that, remember it. I didn't forget that. He, uh, <laughs> oh, the other one <laughs> that we that we exchanged smiles exactly. and eyes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I never met her name. Never I didn't. Her, or I didn't get her name. I didn't whatever, make it that far. Well, because I was lacking confidence. <laughs> whatever other person you meet, <laughs> if you yeah. if you exercise and, uh, and yeah. walk, then uh, or yeah. run or whatever. Then yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Have good memory. There's and, a lot of and, truth and, to and that. And you'll say things like yeah. Yeah, so how's, uh, you know, fill in the blank? And she'll be like, great memory. And then she'll be like, I like you. <laughs> okay, that, that, there might be more steps yeah. in between them. No, that's pretty much it. But I had a friend who, um, I, I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast, but I had a friend who, yeah, I don't, it seemed, I guess she was lacking confidence in some ways. Um, I don't know that I would have known that. She seemed yeah. pretty confident to me. But she she was at a bookstore one time. She picked up this book about affirmations and mm-hmm. started reading it. And she said it changed her life. Uh, yeah. That, that she felt a lot better about herself doing yeah. these. And it was yeah. kind of like the idea behind them was that I actually started reading the book that she had re- read. I didn't finish it. But but um, but um uh it was kind of saying that, like, your brain doesn't really have a choice to believe or not believe things that you repeatedly tell it. And if you, hmm. it's kind of like if you repeatedly tell it um, things that are positive instead of negative, it will start yeah. to actually believe them and act in such a way. I mean, yeah. The, one of the rules for these affirmations was that you have to use an affirmation that's technically true that you actually believe. Yeah. So you can't say something like, if you're feeling like, what was me? I, I'm not in a relationship. You can't counter that with the, you, you can't necessarily counter that with an affirmation that I'm going to get in a relationship, you know, by such and such date. Cause yeah. You may not believe that, but. Yeah. You could come up with some other affirmations. Yeah, technically, so, you technically believe. In. So, in in the therapy world, they have what's called the cognitive triangle, um, with three points. There's there's thoughts, behavior, and emotions, uh, and the idea is that all of these affect each other. That our thoughts affect our emotions, and they affect our behavior. That our behavior affects the other two, and and so on. Um, you know, and, and while we can't directly affect our emotions, like. It, when emotion is triggered, it's triggered. Um, but we do have an ability to influence them. Um, and, and those emotions, of course, can also influence our, our thoughts and behavior. But, um, 
Um, yeah, the, the brain is incredibly malleable. Um, what we allow ourselves to believe is hugely powerful. Um, that's why those affirmations were so helpful to her. Um, yeah, I mean, this is something we'll want to talk about in more detail. But it's kind of what we're talking about now, right? It's the idea of, of confidence. A lot of it is a mental game. Yeah. Uh, it's about what you believe and then how those beliefs affect what you do. Um, I did some of that when I got out of that relationship, that, uh-huh. that in traumatic filled relationship. Uh, mm-hmm. I did start doing affirmation for a little bit. And then after a while, uh, I would just even just like pull it up and read it and it, it would help. You know? yeah. It would be like I'd have yeah. this mental tape yeah. running through my mind. Yeah. And sometimes it would be like I would wake up and – start the day pretty early on with some of these negative mental tapes kind of running mm-hmm. through my mind. But then I would like pull up this list of things that I'd come up with to counter those that yeah. I actually believed and I'd re- just reading through them like once and then they would like yeah. go away for the rest of the day. Yeah. You know, and the, again, that just speaks to the power of belief. Um, that you reminded me of another book. Um, it was kind of the first self-help book before there were self-help books. I mean, that's not technically true. But anyways, it's called Psycho-Cybernetics, which mm. it sounds like a, a sci-fi horror sounds movie. Sounds futuristic. Yeah, but it's actually, it was yeah. this, I think, a German plastic surgeon who he observed that um, people coming to him to get plastic surgery to change their physical appearance, uh-huh. how it he noticed that it even though they looked much better or different or however they intended to, that it didn't change their their beliefs about themselves. Yeah. And so they still thought they were ugly or misshapen uh, or whatever. Uh, um, you know, and he went on to explore that a lot more. And, and uh, you know, he wrote a lot about just how, um, again, just the, what we believe about ourselves is ultimately the most important thing. Um, and it's changeable. Um, cause like you're saying with the affirmations, they don't work on the brain if you don't actually believe they're true. So, right. you know, again, that just speaks to like, uh, one that we have, um, influence over what, what we think and indirectly over how we feel. Um, and two, it also <laughs> means, uh, if, if we're not willing or able, able or, or brave enough to change our thoughts, um, we may keep ourselves stuck in a rut yeah there is some choice there um i you were talking earlier about like um like with depression like that that Mm -hmm. possibility is kind of always there kind of thing in the background yeah i feel kind of like i would liken it to like a a a door that i can open it if i want to um yeah but I can also keep the, the door closed. Yeah, a lot of the time. And yeah, I, I don't have to open it. But I mean, but you know whether sometimes it cracks whether open it opens or not. Like ultimately, it's dependent on what am I willing to do or not do. Yeah. Uh, anyway, back to confidence. I, yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> okay. I, th- I like I like that thought though that um, and actually the the presentation we went to where you were not feeling confident afterwards mm-hmm. though. That yeah. One of the great things in about the presentation though is that um, the presenter was talking about um. Uh, people who she coaches in with relationship stuff, and the, yeah. the people who are most successful are those who are most willing to to actually change. That's right. And, and it wasn't the most attractive ones. Yep, it wasn't the best exactly. dressed ones or yep. the richest ones. It was ones willing to look in the mirror and make some change. Yeah. Yep. And that's when I stood up and I was like, "I'm out of here." <laughs> And I yelled out loud, don't change for anybody. <laughs> Never change. They should love me for me. <laughs> okay, that's not true. I actually did go in another room. But... I may be crappy, but they should love me as a crappy person. <laughs> that's right. You losers. Love me for who I am. Yeah. Um, which, I, was, I'm, I make you know, light of that. Of course, the reality is a little more complicated. But... Yeah, it's true. Um, but, but go ahead. Go ahead. I was in this church lesson one time, and I was, so I was like, what is, what's great about good friends? Or, uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, it was like, what do you like about your best friends? Like, what's the great thing about them? Somebody said they don't try to change us. And then was it a man? It was a man. Okay. Uh, but then, um, but then, uh, then, the, but then, someone made the comment like, "But God tries to change us." Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I think it's not necessarily true that. Um, I don't remember how I got onto this point, but um, I don't know, man. I, but I hope you bring it back to confidence. But it was basically like, <laughs> you know, seeking out help and trying to trying to better yourself. Sure. But, um, well, you know, and that's another thing. Sorry. No, I'm kind of just, cutting off. just basically ahead. that, like, um, it's not um, 
trying to help people better themselves is not like like we all we all need to improve and be better. Yeah, and everybody does. And so it's not like we all need to actually accept each other. All the way. I mean, sure, we need to be patient with people because yeah. people don't change. On we our shouldn't time want scales. to change people against their will. At the same time, and we have to we, we have can to be love encouraging them where they're at. You know, sure. And but it's not mutually exclusive with. But that doesn't mean I never want anything about you to change right. because I might see things about you that you can prove and yep. vice versa. Yeah, that that's a topic we'll have to talk to yeah. about another time because it's, it's it's a little bit complicated. It's not totally related to confidence. Yeah, but. well, but I would say that like I think the biggest confidence, well, at least for me, and maybe this is a male female thing because I, I do think that like for men, our confidence often stems from like a lack of a feeling of adequacy, right? Yeah. Um. I think for women, and again, this is controversial, and someone out there, well, <laughs> some of us hate male. Later. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, um, anyway, it to Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for for women, I think um, it tends to be more about loving themselves as they are, right? Or le- yeah. Um, where are we going with that? Okay. Well, I guess <laughs> maybe this isn't as helpful for women, although you know, maybe affirmations, you know, and, and changing your mindset is more for them, more useful for them. But at, at least for men, like, I think, and I've got to think that this has got overlap between the genders of usefulness, but just like doing difficult things and succeeding at them, or even like doing difficult things and not succeeding at them completely, but like making some progress, you yeah. know, or even trying something. I don't know. I think just trying to do difficult things that we know are worthwhile. I think that grows confidence. Yeah, you legitimate. There's legitimate growth. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, and there's confidence in growth and yeah, becoming better at things. Absolutely. A lot of times you can't perceive that you're getting a lot better at things, but you you really are if you're like doing hard things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, all I know is I'm gonna start wearing more cologne. Oh yeah. When when people are taking photos from me from afar, <laughs> so that then when they show the photos. <laughs> Like, oh, who's that? Like, well, that guy looks <laughs> very confident. Uh huh. Somebody actually told me too. I've actually been, I've actually been uh, kicking around in my mind whether or not I want to shave my head at some point. I'm, my my hairline's receding, and sometimes I think about just like buzzing off the top. I've got a brother that's done this, and yeah. for him it works amazingly. Yeah. He looks like Bruce Willis, and people always comment on that. Yeah. He looks like Bruce Willis. Yeah. But you know, there's some risk there. Like you never know exactly what it looks like until it all comes off. <laughs> true and so yeah i but, i tell paul that so, he, he still looks good yeah and um, i appreciate that though somebody the reason i brought this in though is that i went out to lunch with a friend from my youth like uh, a month ago or so and he was bald and i didn't know he'd shaved his head hmm. and he said he told me something like yeah there's the studies that you know women perceive bald men as more confident. are you sure i didn't tell you that you might have told me that too. I, I have told you that. But he did as well. He told me the, it. The word is out. Independently. Yeah. Well, that's um, why I will never be as attractive as a bald man because <laughs> I have a brother who's balding. I am the opposite. <laughs> I got whatever the opposite gene was of that. <laughs> he got like hair like nonstop. Yeah. It's yep. like, grows like kudzu. Like man. a weed. Like kudzu. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Sure. What are our last thoughts about confidence? Well, uh, I don't know. Just... Just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> I agree. Sorry, that was, that was I agree. Hor- that was horrible. Yeah, I agree. Remarks. But, you know, do the things that you, in your own and wisdom, you think will probably yeah. help you feel more confident. Yeah, well, you know? and, and or, you know, to, especially when we're talking about that social kind of confidence, especially, you know, with, with um, you know, the opposite gender, like get some feedback from people. Um, in the short term, that may make you go mm, and you droop you know it, yeah. it may it may deflate you a little bit but at the same time again back to this idea like improvement like working at things and getting better at them does increase confidence for yeah. instance like for me like i my mom did she imparted a lot of valuable things to me but she did not impart fashion sense to me at all um and i know that my attractiveness in the social sphere <laughs> was hindered by my crappy uh fashion and uh i'm not saying that i'm you know whoever is i'm not saying i'm this most suave guy out there but but i've improved and and i feel better and i feel like uh yeah i feel more confident in social situations yeah Uh, i'm trying to work on that myself like the last year or so yeah Uh, but yeah i guess my final thought would be that um yeah this presentation that we went to what was the last sunday i guess um yeah 
I mean, yeah, for me, like one of the great takeaways, I really liked that comment. And you already basically said it before, but that it mm-hmm. was out of her clients, the ones that are successful in, in actually, you know, getting into relationships and, and getting into marriage, uh, they were not the ones that were the most attractive or whatever. It wasn't, it wasn't thing. It wasn't about things that they could not change. Yeah. It was about things that they actually could change. Yeah. And I feel like that's a confidence booster a little bit that, um, it's not, there, there, aren't in, there aren't inadequacies that we have that we can't affect that are mm. the, inadequacies that we, the inadequacies that we have in general we can affect them and we can yeah. we can do things about them to to move forward kind yeah. of yeah high five yeah high five <laughs> okay well that was our late night semi tired droning about confidence oh yeah uh, it's pretty right. sweet we'll talk to all you people later all right get ready for the cold war oh yeah get ready for yeah, the cold yeah. war thanks for tuning That's in it. bye if you enjoyed this episode please consider subscribing on itunes or your favorite podcasting app and give us a rating thank you <laughs>